The Tale of the Firebird by Janetti Spearin. Once upon a time, in a faraway kingdom, lived the great ruler, Tsar Vasily. He had three sons, and the youngest was named Ivan Tsarevich. The Tsar's great, greatest pride was his garden, filled with exotic trees, and in the center of this garden was the prize of his kingdom, a tree with golden apples. One day, the Tsar's garden came to report that someone had been stealing the fruits of the golden apple tree. Every night there were fewer apples left. Determined to catch the thief, the Tsar ordered his three sons to watch his precious garden through the night. The eldest son was in charge of the first night, but he fell asleep and came back to his father the next day with nothing to report. The second son tried to watch the garden on the second night, but he too fell asleep and saw nothing. On the third night... The youngest, Ivan Tsarevich, was sent to the garden. He watched until midnight without falling asleep. Just as his eyes were about to close, a sudden flash of light illuminated the entire garden. A firebird. As soon as the firebird landed on the golden tree, Ivan Tsarevich grabbed for its tail. That would, that would stop him, but it didn't. The firebird flew away, leaving Ivan Tsarevich with a single glowing feather in his hand. The Tsar was amazed when he saw the miraculous light of the firebird's feather. I must have this firebird, he said. Saddle your horses, my dear sons. Whichever of you can catch the firebird will have half my kingdom as a reward. So the three sons rode off, each going his own way. Whether it was a long way or a short way, we don't know. Ivan Tsarevich rode to the edge of a primeval forest, where he met a big gray wolf. You cannot get the firebird without me said Ivan, uh, Ivan Tsarevich, the wolf said. Leave your horse here and saddle me instead. You spared my children in the Tsar's wolf hunt last year, so now I will be your servant and your, and your guide. So Ivan Tsarevich climbed up on the wolf's back. The wolf made a great leap all the way up to the birds in the sky. They flew over the woods and mountains, over wide rivers, so high that it took Ivan Tsarevich's breath away. Ivan Whether their way was long or short, we don't know, but at last they arrived at a land of wondrous gardens and crystal palaces. Go into the garden, Ivan Tsarevich, the wolf, said the wolf. You will see a firebird in a golden cage hanging from the branch of a tree. Take the firebird, but do not touch the golden cage, for it will bring you bad luck. Ivan Tsarevich entered the garden and saw the firebird in its golden cage. As he reached in, the gold was so beautiful that he could not keep himself from touching it. The moment he did, thousands of invisible bells began to ring and an army of guards appeared from nowhere. They grabbed Ivan Tarevich and took him to their king, King Mahmud. Mahmud recognized the Tsar's youngest son. I would kill any other man who tried to do what you have just done. But your father is my friend. For his sake, I will forgive you. You may keep the firebird, however... In exchange, you must go to the faraway land of King Karam and bring me back a horse with a golden mane. Ivan Tsarevich went back to his wolf and told him what King Mahmud had said. Don't worry, Ivan Tsarevich, said the gray wolf. I can help you find this horse, but I tell you, next time, do not disobey me. Ivan Tsarevich saddled the wolf again, and in three great leaps, they had reached the sky and were soaring above the clouds. They flew over high mountains, deep seas, and enormous green lands. Finally, they reached the kingdom of Karam, and the wolf gave Ivan Tsarevich his instructions. Go into the king's garden, and you will see a horse grazing on the meadow. On the meadow. 
Take the horse by its golden mane and bring it here, but do not touch its harness, for it will bring you bad luck. Ivan Tsarevich did everything as the wolf told him, but when he saw the harness, its golden beauty was so fascinating that he could not resist the temptation to touch it. As soon as he did, there was a sound of a thousand invisible bells, and at the same moment, the guards appeared. They brought Ivan Tsarevich to see King Karam. King Karam looked at Ivan Tsarevich with menacing eyes. Who are you? Why do you want my horse? Ivan Tsarevich told the king his story, holding back no secrets. Karam said, I will give you this horse and his golden harness as a gift, but in return you must go to the kingdom beyond all other kingdoms, the kingdom of Koshche, the immortal, and bring me my sister Yelena the beautiful back to me. Since her capture three years ago, my suffering has been endless. Many heroes have lost their heads on Koshche's field on her account. May God help you. Go. Ivan Tsarevich came back to his wolf in low spirits and told him what had, ha had passed. Don't despair, Ivan Tsarevich. A man can die but once, said the wolf. Get ready to go on another journey. I know who can help us. So Ivan Tsarevich saddled the gray wolf once again, and they rushed as fast as they could to the kingdom beyond all their kingdoms, the kingdom of Koshche the Immortal. They flew over dark woods and impassable swamps. Now we are coming to the place where no human has ever set foot, said the gray wolf. Baba Yaga the Wicked dwells here. If you want to find Yelena the Beautiful, you must do everything Baba Yaga tells you. Ivan Tsarevich turned and saw a cottage that spun around on chicken feet in the middle of the dark forest. It spun so fast that he could not see the door to enter. After consulting with the wolf, Ivan Tsarevich stood before the cottage and shouted, Little hut, little hut, show your front to me and your back to the woods. The cottage immediately stopped spinning and settled down on its chicken feet with its door facing Ivan Tsarevich. He was about to knock at the door when he heard a great thunderclap, and Baba Yaga the Wicked suddenly appeared. Why have you come to visit me, Ivan Tsarevich? She cackled. I think I, kn I know. I will help you, if you are brave. Baba Yaga gave a shout, and from all the corners of the forest, creatures came running, satyrs, monsters, and other beasts. Baba Yaga ordered them to build a fire and put on a huge cauldron of magical waters and herbs. When the switch's brew began to boil, she ordered Ivan Tsarevich to take off his clothes and bathe himself in the bubbling cauldron. Ivan Tsarevich crossed himself and jumped in. And then, a miracle. Instead of being boiled like a shrimp, Ivan Tsarevich found himself in the cool water of a forest lake. In the middle of the lake was a little island covered with sedge and moss. Deep in the moss was a glimmer of something shining. He pushed the sedge away. There was a dazzling sword. As soon as Ivan Tsarevich touched its hilt, a magical strength came to him. Ivan Tsarevich stood up and found himself at the edge of the forest, still holding the magical sword. His faithful wolf was waiting for him, all ready with his clothes. You did a good job this time, Ivan Tsarevich, he said. Faster than the wind they reached the sky, and in the blink of an eye they were approaching the castle of Koshche. The moment they touched the ground, the, they heard the sound of a horn and saw Koshche, the immortal, riding up on his horse. I am looking for the sister of King Karam, Ivan Tsarevich said, with his sword resting before him. But Koshche gave a sinister laugh. Ha! I can't fight a man without a horse. Are you not the son of the Tsar? Yet so poor that you don't have a horse. Ivan Tsarevich didn't know what to answer, but the gray wolf whispered, Don't worry, I will help you. In a moment, the wolf had transformed himself into a warrior's horse, so great and strong that it cannot be described, either with words or with a brush. Koshche, the immortal, stopped laughing. Ivan Tsarevich mounted the great warrior horse and drew his magical sword. The battle began. Ten times they drew their swords and charged at each other, but their strengths were evenly matched, and neither could win. But just as Ivan Tsarevich was about to make another charge, he spotted Yelena the Beautiful. 
Her beauty gave him a jolt of power, and his strength was suddenly doubled. Ivan Sarevich attacked Koshche once more with his magical sword and struck him with a final deadly blow. That was the end of the evil Koshche. For evil cannot be immortal. Only love can be immortal. Yelena the Beautiful and Ivan Sarevich fell in love at first sight. Yelena the Beautiful made a wreath of field flowers and crowned Ivan Sarevich. Then they saddled the mighty warrior horse, and in less than a moment they had arrived at the kingdom of Karam. Karam ran out of his palace to meet them. Tears streamed from his eyes at the sight of his beloved sister. He embraced her, and Ivan Sarevich together, saying, I bless your love. My dear children, I am giving my kingdom to you, Ivan Sarevich, and I want you to be its ruler when I am old. Ivan Sarevich thanked Karam for his generous gifts and went off to fulfill the rest of his promises. He settled the horse with a golden mane from, for Yelena and mounted his warrior horse beside her. Together they rode to the kingdom of Mahmud. King Mahmud and all his glorious court were overjoyed to see Ivan Sarevich again and amazed with the beauty of Yelena. The king was so taken with her that he gave her the golden maned horse. He congratulated Ivan Sarevich on his great happiness and gave him the gift he had promised, the firebird in its golden cage. When Ivan Sarevich and Yelena the Beautiful returned to the king's stables, they found that the warrior horse had transformed itself back into a gray wolf once again. Here my help ends, Ivan Sarevich. Be happy. Ivan Sarevich thanked him, and the wolf vanished into the dark woods. Tsar Vasily was very happy to see his beloved son with Yelena the Beautiful and all the kingly gifts they had been given. The wedding was declared that the Tsar gave a feast for everyone in the kingdom, brightened by the light of the firebird. For many, many years afterward, the people in that part of the world still talked of the wedding feast of the Tsar's youngest son and the magical power and beauty of the firebird.